Andre. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, I will I will introduce our use case, what what we actually did the last weeks, and uh, the company in a short scale. I will introduce what we did and who is behind the Easier AG. Jeremy will present the Open Innovation Lab approach, and we will hopefully present you something that is insightful and interesting also from your side. So healthcare goes mobile on OpenShift that uh, we really realized something in only four weeks. We built not just one app, we built actually two apps, one on the, on the, on the hospital side uh, and one for the user, the end user. So what is what we implemented? Um, I have four fundamental questions that come from the actual application what we did. So what is one of the most prevalent problems in healthcare? How can we build not just an MVP, but a marketable solution for our industry? Uh, what kind of technologies we want to use? And of course, when I'm here, we use the OpenShift environment. And what are the key challenges ahead? And also including how can we excel the OpenShift platform in order to scale our market? So let's. Let me introduce you a little bit what means, what is the most prevailing problem in healthcare today? What do you do when you have a more or less urgent problem with your health? What do you do? Googling? Do you know your emergency number of your country? Do you know the emergency number of Germany? So if you have an emergent problem after having a few more beers or too much beers, no? You see, that's the problem. You don't know where to go to, right? And one of our founders was, is actually working in an emergency department where she... Oh, it's not working. Oh, no, it's working. She's working in an emergency department where she every day vis gets visits from patients that are actually not emergent. They are not urgent, actually, right? And that, this is what... You can see in these numbers, this is a hospital from Switzerland, a very normal hospital. The emergency cases over the years raised exponentially almost. No, not really. So, but it grew a lot over the years. Even if you introduce the urgent care facility, the emergency department visits increased uh, in absolute numbers in a way that is not possible to take care of every single patient. And what do you have to do when you're in an emergency room? Who has been in an emergency room the last four weeks? No? Nobody? Okay, you're lucky. But normally, when you go there and you have not a really serious problem, you're identified, what, you have to wait a very long time to be treated. So nobody is visiting you, you sit in the waiting room, and at some point in time, uh, an assistant doctor is coming, visiting you, and will choose you to be treated and sends you home with an ibuprofen, and then you stay at home and wait for the next day to visit a GP, M mostly, right? That's what they do. Um, so this is a big problem. And what our emergency doctor, Dorothy, intended to do is she wanted to triage these people out that don't really need an emergency room but need to be taken care of. And that's why we try to approach this in a, in a company. And that's where the name ECER is coming from. And ECER is Easier Emergency Room Access, essentially. That's why we founded this company, because uh, what I introduce you is she, uh, she did a master thesis in 2015 and in 2016, we said, okay, because the hospital did not support our innovation or our thinking around this, we founded the company at the beginning of last year, so it's almost, it's around one year old. We have uh, three founders, all from the healthcare industry. We have, uh, we fund the whole project by ourselves. Uh, this is lucky Switzerland, so we have enough income to uh, fund this on our private <laughs> sources. And we have our headquarters in Zurich. So our value proposition is to make healthcare easier. Not just emergency room easier, but we have other products that try to help all the patients and potential 
uh, people that visit doctors to make this consumption of healthcare in a way easier. So this is our journey. It all started from university work. We did, she did write a thesis about how to make this access to care a lot better than it is now. And not that everybody who needs somehow an urgent care facility visits the ER, which has an extensive amount of resources involved. In Switzerland, an ER visit costs three to four times more than a normal GP visit during the week. And I think it's not different in Germany. I think it's double that much. And in other countries, people visit the ER because they get medication for free. Not because they are really needing the care, but they get medication for free in that. Um, so, sorry. So, what we tried to search is an internal founding by the hospital. And they said, no, we got a new hospital information system from the US. So, we will not sponsor any new innovations here. We will just rely on what we are going to get in two or three years from this uh, hospital information system. And we said, okay, this innovation needs to be done in a much shorter time. And we said, okay, let's do it ourselves and start it. And then we founded the company, searched for partners. Essentially, after one year of searching, I found Red Hat. <laughs> and the concept of innovation labs, which supported us essentially to do a discovery session in November 2016. And we had this uh, innovation lab session in February 2017. So there was a long planning ahead of this uh, from the original work. Oh, sorry, it's actually 2015, so it, it's not 16, sorry. Uh, so it took us quite some time to come to this uh, Innovation Lab session and realize the product itself. Just to give you a short introduction how this startup really evolved in a, in a quite short time. The founders, these are the key founders here. You can see our emergency doctor. She's working 100% as head of emergency department in a medium-sized hospital in Switzerland. And she has time to co-found with us. And her husband is also our lawyer, which is always important in this business, um, to, to have somebody on board who can support us in that. And the other founder who has actually three or four other companies in the healthcare sector, he's very experienced to get access to healthcare to the healthcare market and to market our product. So, uh, and me, yeah, I'm only the small nerd taking care of the technology and the development stuff. So these are a great team we are working with, with uh, some developers in the background. So we developed the solution, we call it not easier because I mean, we have at the moment more products than this. We started to say, okay, we want a smarter ER. Oh, uh, almost emergency. Uh, um, so the solution was to get access to and support of the healthcare process with regard to urgent care. What do you do? You should call the emergency or call the app in our case. You do a triage based on the symptoms and the facility you choose. You have access to the facility in your ultimate vicinity. Then you get treated and you have an aftercare that you're taking care of in the app. So the, the symbols indicate what you can do in the app nowadays. So what do you do in detail? I will not go into this. It's just for reading it out. But what you really have it, you can see here in the screens, that supports you in getting triaged by the nurse. And what is the benefit of this? You don't have to wait six hours in the ER and watch other patients to be treated or not treated. Or you meet your neighbor with a broken arm who's also waiting two hours because he's not that badly sick, right? So this is a big benefit. And you have the benefit of you know which facilities serve for your health problem at a time. On the other hand, the nurses that do the triage, when you come to the ER, look at you and say, oh no, you can wait here for four or five hours and we take care of you if, it, if you're not stable, but at least there are other people who are more urgent than you. Uh, they can triage you from home. And then they can call you at any point in time and say, hey, are you really 
Are you, are you, are you wanting to access still, or is it bad? Is it more bad your condition that you have? And you can always have a feedback from there. And after that, you get a check-in ticket to the facility when you're scheduled, and you have, like, when you go to a flight on the airport and can say, okay, let's check in at tonight at the Charité here around the corner at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. and you get treated by them uh, at this very moment, not in the future. So this is essentially what we did. I, I have a few more bullet points here. What does the application? Um, I think the most important thing what we have here is here. This is, is the medical part, the logic. And that is also one of the parts why we chose the OpenShift environment and the BRMS that is running in this environment in order to get a triage, a safe triage for the patients, to do a self-diagnostics and to have a process that takes care of you and can monitor <laughs> you during your care event. On the other hand, you have the healthcare facilities that needs to take care of you. That means here are the new cases that arrive. That means when you open up the app, checked in, you will appear here. And the nurses ultimately see you and can contact you right from the beginning, live. Then they can schedule you at a certain time. They can check in you when you're in the ER. And when you're out of it, you're... <coughs> You, you get a post ticket where you can feedback, is the process or has, have you been processed in a way that is adequate? So these are the rough figures that you can improve during that. Did, did you know that 80% or more are non-urgent cases, essentially from a medical perspective in ER rooms? I think it's publicly known nowadays because the press and the media took over a lot of reporting on that. But all these cases can be reduced, or at least we hope to, to reduce half of them. And even half of them can save a lot of money in the healthcare system. So for the health insurances, and we talked to health insurances in Switzerland and Germany that really want to support this application because they can start triaging to facilities that they know are good and not too expensive. Huh? Obviously, and it supports them in order to track how people that are insured in their, in their different uh, contracts, uh, how they behave over time. And of course, the health facilities, they have a much, much better, um, much, much better resource utilization during the day. So these are the benefits we have. And now we come to the part, how can we build this? Effectively, we have an idea, this is an academic work, but we want to have a real product that is running on the application side. And there comes into play the innovation labs. We searched for one and a half years to realize the product. We talked to five or six different software development companies and they all said, oh, it's a nice idea, but it costs four or 500,000 euro on the one hand and then it's a very small product running on their own small application stack. And that, that is not making sense for us because when we want to use it in the healthcare sector, it needs to be safe and scalable for this industry. And then I think the battery is low. I think the innovation labs Jeremy will introduce helped us to get this application into life. Thanks, Andre. Um, you might need to drive for the, for the video. So um, in labs, we're really focused on people, culture, apps, making the technology successful. And this is what this talk is we wanted to show you was um, actually we were focused on making the infrastructure disappear a little bit. Um, and so what Andre described was actually two mobile apps talking to our Feed Henry um, backend, which is mobile backend which is running on OpenShift, um, handles scaling automatically, has the triage rules actually running in um, business rules, which is a Drools open source uh, project that the product is based on. And um, it all kind of came together in a four week period. So what is the labs? Uh, well, these clickers going. So w when we created Open Innovation Labs, um, we realized that 
every movement needs a place to meet. And um, we needed to create a space for our customers to innovate, um, to, you know, to help you in, in this room. You represent some significant OpenShift installations. And you need to get your users, the developers, and product owners successful on your clusters to make sure those investments are really worthwhile. So this is what we're about. Um, my elevator pitch is kind of like come and do DevOps in our kitchen. We've created an amazing kitchen. It's a pre-integrated um, OpenShift CI, CD. Um, I would say that we do a lot more than that. So we create um, Jira and Confluence and Slack and everything integrated into that. So that when we did the residency with Andre, it was really um, his developers working with us, um, doing business functional code from the beginning, not trying to fiddle with the infrastructure to get everything working. Um, the, the things that we really care about, first of all, it's an immersive experience. It's a residency. This was a four-week residency. Um, typically, residencies start at four weeks. That's about the minimum of what you can do from an app dev perspective. Um, we go up to 12 weeks. 12 weeks, we really want to be shipping something in production at that stage. Um, but we are pretty much focused on starting with rapid prototyping, experimenting, um, iterating fast, you know, kind of all the lean stuff that you guys think about, um, and, and driving innovation. The, the kind of, this is the life cycle of, of a residency. I'm not going to read out all of it, but Andre talked about the discovery. We, we take a lot of time focusing on what the business problem is you're trying to solve. Um, the, the kitchen and the infrastructure is kind of a pre-built stuff. You can actually go to our website um, and actually build your own stack. Um, you can see the graphic. We call it infographic. But there's a whole Ansible automation that stands up that entire stack. Um, you can see some videos of that in action. Um, but the focus is not on that. It's about the residency. It's about what we're trying to build, the cultural change, the, the, the um, you know, what, what the output of the residency is. And we kind of focus on the demo day. Um, the other way to describe labs is very much like a, a startup incubator for enterprise customers of Red Hats. Um, and then we want to transition into a successful production environment. And right now, that's you know when we finish the residency, and Andre can probably comment a little bit more how things are going. But we're very much focused on that, you know, the off ramp. And one of the nice things about OpenShift is that you know even if you're using our environment, the off ramp to your own OpenShift cluster is actually relatively easy um, to do. So it's all well and good talking about it, but we wanted to show you a quick two-minute video to hopefully bring it home to you. Ethere is a startup which develops digital products, uh, innovations, and technology for healthcare systems. I was fascinated by the concept, and uh, I started searching for the possibility to get in contact in order to get an innovation lab. Open Innovation Labs is taking Red Hat's DNA, software development DNA, open source culture and way of working, and transferring that to our customers in a very intensive residential environment. A residency is an immersive uh, experience where teams of, fairly small teams of developers and product owners that come together, matched with Red Hat consultants and, and experts. And what they're focused on in that residency is building a piece of software. It might be a mobile app, it might be um, a set of microservices, but ultimately the goal of the residency and that experience is building something that really has an effect for a customer's business. The Innovation Lab is very exciting for me. I've never done this before, and I really can see my ideas getting a body, a shape, getting to life. And it's so exciting to see all the people just build something you have had in your mind for so many years. The Red Hat Innovation Lab brings together all levels of people from diverse backgrounds that fit with us in order to bring this product within this lab session into life. And that's why we chose a provider of services that could help us getting our innovative products run in the real world. So um, we don't have a lot of time. And I, I do understand that there's beers waiting somewhere, so we have to keep it snappy. Um, we have a funky booth here. Come and talk to Andrea and myself. Lots of 
questions about culture and technology that people have written on it, feel free to write some more before we take it down later on this evening. But I just wanted to hand over to Andre to sort of wrap it up. Maybe you can comment on the rest and see a little bit. Thank you, Jeremy. So I will wrap it, wrap it up quickly. Um, how, what we did and how we used the uh, OpenShift uh, technology in order to produce our workflow. And you can see that here on a rough outline how we used the OpenShift environment in order to realize the different uh, stages of our process. And I think this is a very important part during the lab that you match the business requirements to your technology where all the people in the room contribute in order to facilitate this transfer and everybody understands this from the business owner to the developer on each side. And this helped a lot in engaging all the people for an efficient development process during the four weeks. And a lot of the development was done remotely and we had daily stand-ups that were remotely, uh, which helped then in the end that these uh, four days in the lab um, did re uh, engage into this, uh, into this uh, process. So you can see here, and I will present a few slides, the Red Hat mobile application platform that is running on OpenShift. Uh, it's, it's a Fit Henry based uh, technology from Ireland. We, we use that. So the developers essentially brought their own de de development environment. They used Ionic too. But the uh, best way to, to really facilitate a good development process is that the Red Hat application platform uh, integrates uh, or provides all the wrappers where the software is uploaded and then the pipeline is defined and we can push them to all the devices we wanted. And this was a very efficient approach that is still running and we are still doing some sprints now to wrap the work up. And the whole infrastructure allows us to have a really standardized but flexible way uh, in order to, uh, to uh, align this. And you can see here, this was a graph during the Innovation Lab that really matches somehow the, the flow of the Red Hat application platform. So, you, Jeremy talked about this technology stack. You can do that uh, on the web by yourself, uh, on the Innovation Lab um, web page. And this was done before. I did that last August before the lab. And when you now look at it, what we used, this is essentially or fundamentally most of the things here you can see are used in our lab environment and also now in our productive environment. So it's a very realistic way in order to judge which kind of levels for, do you need for application development, the DevOps tools you need, the container platform, which is a central part here on OpenShift, and the whole infrastructure. And you can really have a standard way for the developers also that reliably pushes their applications to, to the devices. Um, and just a few details, we have here a, a Ch Jenkins pipeline aligned. Of course, we are at the moment still in the development stage and the testing phase now. Next week we will do a testing with 25 users where we get a feedback. Is the application really running smoothly? Are the user interfaces interacting adequately with the user? There's one thing in healthcare that are really a, a, a big issue. And the big issue is safety. And are you compliant with the healthcare industry standards? So in the US, it's if you're hyper compliant or in the European Union, you have the CE label where you need to be certified against in order to say, okay, we have a safe application running. And they do not just certify the application itself, they also certify parts of the infrastructure. And that is a very important thing we have to validate now when we speak to the regulators and certification instances in each country where they have to certify the product. So this is the next step from a legal perspective. That's why we have a lawyer on board. Um, and then lastly, the vision is, it's. We, we don't stand still and uh, simply realize the product as we thought of two years ago. Uh, we want to have the BRMS on OpenShift in a new version where all the rules from the triaging are centrally administered and the applications use that in order to 
uh, get triaged ad adequately. And this is important also to validate it that the rules are working adequately in the real environment and the patients that do not get lost or you will be sent to a hospital uh, when you, um, when you uh, to the wrong hospital in, in the end. We, we work on a blockchain approach for digital identity. Uh, of course, blockchain is a big buzzword at the moment, but uh, in Switzerland we have a big community around that and uh, we will think of using this emergency application in order to push our digital identity for healthcare, not just as a citizen. Uh, and the multi-device integration, this is a, a very important thing to integrate, not just your device, your iPhone, your smartphone you have, but real devices for your monitoring, so that you can see in a, in a, in a live environment what are your metabolic parameters. So this is, I, I would just go into these technological things that, that you might be interested in. So uh, I thank you so much for having us. And this is a picture from Waterford where we had the first innovation lab in Europe. Uh, this was the great team, the great interactions here you can see. And this is the new building in, uh, in Waterford. And uh, happy to, to answer any questions from your side. Thank you so much.